Hey guys, Sister Bear, and this is ATM9. I myself am having a wonderful day. Hope you guys all are as well. Go ahead and move forward. Get back into this maze pack. In between episodes, did a little bit here, not a ton. We'll take a look, see, kind of push forward, right? So, first thing I did was set up a bunch of new recipes, things like this rainbow generator. Then there was another weird generator down here, I think. The diamond generator, I got that one done. Set up the end exchanger. These are all components to different parts of the ATM star, and we can actually produce all these components now, no problem at all whatsoever. So I just set up the 3x3 crafting grid recipes, right? So no processing at all. These were just things we could craft up. So I got that done. A bunch of things, right? So I did some, uh, what is that there? That would have been uh, power stuff as well. So I got that done there. Set up some recipes we'll be using today. So in this here, we have a setup to get us a matter condenser going. We're actually set up two of them. Then I also have a setup here to set up some quantum rings. So quantum rings are going to be used to move our channels from one dimension to the other with AE2. We'll be utilizing that to actually produce our Ars Nouveau source that we need to produce for the kind of magic power for it in the hyper box and then move it back to the overworld. So that's kind of the plan there. There's actually a cool add-on mod too with this as well. This one here, Ars Energisti. This one actually has a storage cell so you can store the Ars Nouveau source in a cell and then, yeah, just move that around as you need to all around your base. So pretty excited to try that one out. One thing I found out in between episode two via a comment was over here. I guess it wasn't over here. It was just in general. You can actually put two weapon enchants on your weapons. So I have Smite X and Sharpness 9 on this sword. And I have the same thing on my axe. And you can actually, yeah, you can put two of them on. Usually you're limited to one. In this, no problem at all. You can put two. You can't put three. I tried putting on a Bane of uh, Anthropods as well. Did not let me. And you can't put on two armor types either. I tried that one as well. So definitely pretty cool there. And I don't think I did anything else. I think that's pretty much everything. So my plan for today, like I said, is get us into Ars Nouveau. With that, we'll get into, I guess, an ability to move in the beyond. And what is the other dimension where we can fly? Twilight Force. So I want to have a way to uh, move around there quickly. And then on top of that, we'll be able to produce. There was something we need with the ATM Star for these uh, kind of items as well. Well, that's like freezing up there. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab you. Can't remember what we need here. It showed us here somewhere. I think we have to get to this. We have to get to the Wildem. I don't know if we'll get to that today, but we'll have to get to the Wildem, and then we'll finally get to these, these Focus of Summoning. So this is kind of the goal with the mod where we need to get to for the ATM Star. So we're going down this path either way. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it here. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and automate here is going to be these here, the Matter Condensers, right? So these actually produce two different items. I think they're called Matter Balls, and then there's the Singularities. The Singularities we need to actually set up our quantum rings. So that'll be what they're for. So let's go ahead and uh, pop those down right there. Could uh, make a pathway in here as well. And yeah, I have a controller here too, so I'll be able to hook this up really easy. So let's go ahead and grab our drawers. So let's go ahead and uh, put them down. So I'll end up pulling the items that these are gonna produce into these drawers here. I have some puller upgrades. So the puller upgrades, let's go inside. You can set the direction, just right click on it. We want it set to down. I think it's set to that by default. So we don't really need to change anything there. Then we'll probably want to lock these as well. So let's actually lock them. And they'll also want to go ahead and uh, link them up with the controller over here. It's actually already linked up to that one. I just right click that. That should actually link them up to that controller, at which point uh, this is ready to go. So that's pretty cool there. So what we need to do with these is not give them power. We basically just need to feed these items is all we have to do. We actually need a sink is what we need. So let's go grab a sink here. Let's do that. Go ahead and uh, pump that, I guess, right there. Then inside here, we need to have a storage component. So I have 264Ks. You can see here, there's like stored energy, and you can have this little button here. When you click it, it goes to different items. So one will be set to singularities, and the other one's going to be set to the matter balls, right? So go ahead and do that, because we need these for a later uh, thing as well. Not today, but a later thing. So what we're going to be using to pipe the water out of here and into here, right? So you use items, or you use water. We're going to use water because it's just easy to move mass amounts of it very easily. But we're going to be using the piping from integrated tunnels, which is the add-on to integrated dynamics. So it just takes the crystallized uh, mineral to actually produce all these things. So really easy. Have that in a botany pot over here already. So that's cool there. Go ahead and uh, grab this. This is a fluid importer. So this will import from the sink. There's another one of these too. So these little connections here, it's called a exporter. So if we wanted to export into this, I'd have to put that on this end here. But if you want to just move things, you just do that. You put in the uh, fluid interfaces or item interfaces, depending on what you're working with. Then some of the logic cable here. So just do a logic cable and your logic cable, which point out uh, we go ahead and grab one of these variable cards. You need one of these to make them work. And you have to set one of these here, right? So you have these different options. The only thing we care about right now is to import all fluids. You go inside it, and we actually tweak the settings here. So we can change the fluid transfer rate. It can actually do max int of water per tick. 
but we're just going to set it to, I guess, this here. So close enough to max int without uh, having to worry about each individual little number there. And that should be already working, actually. So go here, see the stored energy is going up. That's going to take some time, probably about 10 minutes there. But then we'll get our first singularity. And this will just keep kind of producing nonstop. And this one's already producing, right? So this one already has the matter balls, I guess. So let's go ahead and grab them. And with that, uh, we're good to go. And we actually set the filter on this, I guess. So let's go, let's go ahead and pop that in there. And then we should be able to see matter balls in the system, right? So there you go. All linked up, ready to go. And all I have to do is set the filter on that one. And we're pretty much finished, right? So that's really simple. That's going to take some time, though, like I said. So let's uh, go ahead and do something else here. Let's go ahead and grab uh, some more of that cut. Make sure it looks pretty for, uh, you know, all the people that are looking. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is uh, set up the source. We actually need to produce a bunch of this to the source gems. Get into Art Nouveau. It's like the base crafting component. So we need to go ahead and get to that there. I think I have... No, I don't have anything in there. I think I have everything pretty much on me. Uh, it won't be over here, actually. I set up a new uh, one of these here. What are they called there? The I need to hit one to turn that back on. There you go. The wireless connector over here with another set of 32 channels. What we'll do here is set up the... Alchemical chamber is what we need here. So let's actually go ahead and grab some of them. Have them set to be automated here. They just take some uh, wood and gold, pretty much. So the wood from Art Nouveau. It's a really easy to craft there. Go ahead and grab three of them. This one here can actually be used for several things, for, I guess, crafting with the bot. But if you give it lapis or amethyst, it produces um, these things here, the actual source gems, right? So that's going to be what we're doing. Let's go ahead and uh, grab ourselves a chest here, I suppose. So a chest, just as a buffer. Then we'll want a exporter as well. Make sure we have some of them. We're going to export bus, and we'll just export, I guess, directly into this. Actually, I shouldn't do that. Let's go ahead and do this here. Put it in the middle. There you go, just so it's off the cable here. And grab a Fluix. Cool, and then grab ourselves the, which, what do we do here, the export bus. And we'll just set that to Lapis, I suppose. So go to here, go to Lapis. Pop that right there. And that should just get automatically filled up. Which point all that we have to do, I guess, is pull out of it and pop into there. Like I said, we're going to be using the tunnels again. So let's do this right here. Grab ourselves uh, some of these ones here. These are the item interfaces. So the same thing we did before. That, that, and that. Then we'll just have an importer to import from that chest. The reason I'm switching to these two, the actual, I guess, the uh, interdynamics kind of tunnels here, they're way less lag than pipes. So I'm going to be switching a lot of our pipes in our base over to these, except for where we actually need very, very insanely fast connections. Which pipes is good at, right? So anyway, good to uh, pop that there. Get one on the back. Pop one there as well. Then probably use that to import all items, at which point they should end up in here, right? So we already have the first part of it done. Now this machine here is pretty dumb too. So it isn't uh, smart about its output. If I try to pull out right away, it's going to actually pull out the lapis. So we want it to convert first, right? So you can see there it has a crafting process. We actually speed that up too. If we have a source jar nearby, we'll do that later on. But for right now, not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and grab another door here. I think we can actually put this in our offhand and put this down locked as well. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's already locked there. And go ahead and grab you. Grab ourselves some more item interfaces. There you go. That, that, and that. Uh, cables as well, I guess. And this one, instead of the importer, we'll want a exporter. So let's go ahead and grab an exporter. And we want the item one. So let's go ahead and grab that right there. Cool, and pop that on top. And then that's our already gone ahead and converted one too, which is awesome. And we'll just go ahead and do this here. Go ahead and set the variable card. Again, export all items. There's also a bunch of settings in here you can change as well. So you can actually change the item transfer rate as well. But we're not worried about the transfer rate as well, at all at this point. We do need to filter it. So grab one, pop it in here, which point you should be able to pull in all the rest. And that's filtered now and fully automated. So that is two things to take care of very quickly, right? So that's actually pretty cool. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess pretty this up a little bit. Here you go. Set this up to the top. And then I'll come back with my white concrete later on. And this will be pretty much. The only thing we'll add to this one, like I said, is a source. Uh, a source of source in the area. So these actually work faster. And while we're waiting for a little bit of the source to actually be produced here. So we get to the next part. We'll set up our first quantum ring. So we need to set up two of these quantum rings. Kind of link them up, right? So we'll have one in this dimension. And then we'll have another one in the hyper box. So that's going to be where we do our source setup, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, set up the multi-block here. It's just this here. So it's just a ring of these quantum rings. So that's that. Then you grab ourselves this here, a quantum link chamber. And you just pop that in the center. And that multi-block. And that's actually connected to a cable here too. So what you would normally do, I guess, is just run a line of dents into this to get the amount of channels that you actually want into it. Like, you know what I mean? Like 32 channels. 
But this is already connected to the line here. I'm pretty sure this line's only connected to two things down there. I only need three, I guess, in the other dimension. So I'll probably leave this. I know there's six, at least six uh, um, channels in that ring. That should be enough for my needs in the other dimension. So I'm not going to worry about that. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. We will have to come back here, I guess, in a bit too and throw in a quantum entangled singularity in here. But we need to grab one of these singularities once it's produced and explode it, basically. We need to um, use a interpol and a singularity with a TNT, explode it, and get a quantum entangled one. So that's one of the things we're waiting on here, as well as the source, right? There we go, got a storage bus on there as well. And with that, we're actually good to go. We actually had 33 of them, which is fantastic. With that, we can actually start producing the actual source now, I think. We have enough now. We need to make these ones here. They are called, what are they called there? They're called the ones that we're going to be using for source. So there's different options there. There's a whole bunch of these source links. I think there's five or six. We'll be using the agronomic uh, source links, and we're going to be using eight of them. So let's go ahead and grab eight of those guys. So let's grab those real quick. Then we want the uh, source jars as well. So let's go ahead and grab them as well. We'll be using, I guess, only one of these, I guess, later on. But for right now, we need eight just because I need to get a whole bunch of it before we can actually, I guess, store the drive there. So we do a little bit of crafting there. Then we just need to go ahead and uh, head to the other dimension there. So let's go ahead and uh, head into here and actually produce our first source. So these one here actually produce, I guess, the source from growth decks. And, well, what do we have in here? Nothing but massive amounts of growth decks. So it's going to work really well in this area. So let's go ahead and uh, pop them down here. These things have really weird hitboxes too, so I want to be a little careful here so I don't have to break and replace them ten times. Let's do that. Go you know that there. That one's good. And we'll just do a little uh, circle here, kind of like that. We're going to end up replacing this cable too. This will actually be a E2 cable in a little bit. You see there, the particles, they're actually getting filled up with the source there. Which point, all we have to do is uh, put down, I guess, source jars in the area. So what we do is this here. There you go. Could uh, hopefully get these all hooked up. And this thing's just going to turn into a insane setup to produce us tons of source very quickly. And that will actually fill up all these jars and give us all the source that we need. So. Once these fill up here, we'll go ahead and uh, do a little bit of crafting with the next thing here, which is going to be the enchanting apparatus. And with that, we'll be able to uh, get to the next part of it. And hopefully by the time we're done with the enchanting apparatus, we have a singularity. So we'll actually go ahead and uh, set up a quantum ring, probably right here. I'm probably going to put it right on the ceiling here too. So anyway, this will be, I guess, done in a second. These are already all half full. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, set up the enchanting apparatus. So we need to go ahead and uh, set this last recipe in here. Apparently, I forgot the pedestals. I did go ahead and make the arcane core. We need this one. Go ahead and grab the actual pedestals as well, I guess. Let's go ahead and grab how many of these we need. I think 11. So let's actually go ahead and grab 11 of those. Then we need another imbuement chamber. So I have that. We have the arcane core. So that's just that there. And the last thing we need, I guess, is going to be the enchanting apparatus. So let's go ahead and grab that as well. I believe I have a recipe for that as well. That source stone is just eight stone around a source gem. So it's actually really easy to make. So anyway, that is good there. I think it's down this hall, right? No, I keep going down that hall. Let's go this way here. So to set up the actual enchanting apparatus is super simple. You just kind of grab the core. Then somewhere, I don't know what the range is, but within a certain range there, you just put down the pedestals, kind of like this here, kind of all around it like this. And then you just put the enchanting opera, uh, apparatus on top there. There you go. First recipe we're going to want to do with this is this here. I want to actually make the drive so we'd actually store our source inside a A2, right? But to do that, we need some of these manipulation cores. And once we have that, we get that done. That's going to be done with one of these imbuement chambers. So anyway, let's kind of come over here. Set up a little area for these as well. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a space here. I don't really know how many of these we'll end up needing. Let's just set up one for right now. So the way these things work here, I guess with the recipe we're going to be setting up here is a little different. I actually turn these into a different form too. So you turn to this form here to the arcane platforms. And with that, we'd actually put down the apparatus. At which point, I think we just lay these kind of sideways. Kind of like this. So that and that. You put them flat around them too. I just like having them this way to kind of organize them. So let's do that, that there. But I believe they check for, I guess, things on them that are within a three by three area for the actual recipe. Kind of show that recipe here in a second. So let's go ahead and grab you. Go ahead and grab ourselves a, oh, we have the manipulation right here. So what we have to do is give it a source gem, but on those pedestals that it has to have these three items, right? That's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and uh, hunt down our actual area here. Apparently I have all the recipe in here. So let's grab you, you and you. Should grab this stuff as well, I guess. We'll make sure we have that on us. With that, we can set up the recipe. It doesn't actually use the items that are actually on those pedestals either. So that's actually kind of something to be aware of as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, set them up. So that, that, and that right there. Go ahead and uh, put you here, you here, and you here. And that'll be kind of setting the recipe there. Don't think it tells you by default. I guess it doesn't. Let's actually go ahead and grab a gem here. Should be able to start the process. So if I put one in here, 
see there it's crafting a manipulation essence. I believe we can actually speed this one up with source as well. So if I actually take source and just have it in the area, we'll do this automatically later on. But it'll actually feed into there, actually speed up this process quite uh, substantially. It'll actually make it happen a lot quicker, right? But you also see it doesn't actually use the items on the pedestals. So you can kind of have a whole bunch of them set up for a whole bunch of different recipes simultaneously without having to worry about it. I'm going to craft about three of these, I believe. Then there's one more other one I think I did as well. So yeah, this one here. One weird thing about this setup here too as well. I'm not going to automate this one right yet because I'm not sure which ones we need. But if you want to do another one of these, it has to be, I guess you could have it here. You'd have to start another one here. So you have, you have to have them like a couple blocks away. So the pedestals aren't interacting with this one here. So you have to have them kind of spread out. It's a little annoying like that. But, you know, it is how it is. And uh, it's going to be how we have to deal with it here. And all we should need to actually craft this up now is uh, grab one of these item housings. And then go ahead and set up the recipe here. So that, that four of these right and then two of the source gems then i believe we just use the housing on the center and you get yourself this beautiful display here this thing's actually really cool how it works here should go ahead and actually produce it pretty quickly and uh we go ahead and grab it and then we have the housing that we need right so go ahead and grab that get ourselves the housing and then at that point i guess all we need is a 64k let's use a 64k for this i don't think we need a massive amount right so let's go ahead and grab that Hopefully that is done here in a second. Go ahead, grab you, and then just go ahead, combine these up, right? So that, that. Now we have a disc that can actually store up, uh, I guess, the source on it, which is awesome. So where do we want to go here? I guess down here. I want to see if this is done yet. So is this finished? It is not. We're almost there. We're almost there. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and uh, make a leap spell. I want to get the leap spell done as well. So I grab the air essence. So we have that in this here. So I think we actually have air through deed. I need to remember which side of the base that's on, though. <laughs> don't know where I left my table. I think it's down this one here. It is uh, down here. There you go. Go ahead and grab ourselves our actual book here. Actually, I think we can upgrade our book down too. So go here. Yeah, we can actually do this, I think, right? So go into there, grab our book, and get to the second tier. No use on that. Yeah, we just need this here. So let's go ahead and grab you. And we should be able to uh, grab our quartz blocks here. And that should be the second tier of the book. With that, uh, we should be able to get two different spells here. But what we want right now, I guess, is just leap. So let's go ahead and grab a leap here. Go ahead and choose that one. Make sure we select it. Make sure we have uh, some of the wings here. I think I have them in my chest. I have this recipe in our chest, but should have enough of them right here. It's right there. And then one of these ones here. This is an air essence. So I set up a second imbuement chamber. So let's go ahead. Uh, oh, I didn't. Wait. Why'd that not do the spell? Let's go here. Go to leap. That. Select. No. Oh, we need the XP. I forget about the XP here. I think it was three or four levels. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, grab a couple levels here. There we go. And now we should be able to set the recipe. I am failing miserably. Anyway, let's try that again. No, nope, let's not do lights. Let's do uh, that there. Leap. Go ahead and try that one more time. Select it. There we go. Actually, I already grabbed the essence. And we just need to grab the actual building wings as well. One, two, three. And it'll actually make us a leap spell. And now we'll be able to have a spell that makes it so we can actually move around the other very easily which is kind of the idea here so i just use that go in here go to c go to a new spell uh this one here go to name it i guess uh leapy called leapy because that seems like a good name there and i guess it would just be self and then leap right let's go do that great and then i just go ahead move around pretty quickly which is pretty awesome we're we'll going to make another item so we can actually do that uh much better here in a bit too but that is a good start let's go ahead and uh, set up another little ritual here with the enchanter right so let's do that we have four diamonds Two under pearls and then the two source gem. And with that, we use one of these here, a ring of potential. So that right there is going to give us a ring of discount, which is going to make all our spells cheaper when it's uh, equipped as a trinket, right? So go ahead and grab that one. Then we're going to immediately, I guess, get it to the higher level as well. So we have the ring of greater discount, which is going to reduce the cost of all spells by 20, which is not too bad at all. And these don't take any bad at all. So they're actually pretty easy to make. So let's go ahead and grab you. That'll end up uh, back in there, I guess. And we have that in the two blades. So we just go ahead, do this and this. This right here as well. That is good. And then two source again. Same time, put the ring in there. That'll handle that one. And we're going to do one more upgrade here. Next one's going to be the Enchanter's Mirror. Apparently, I, okay, I do have everything. So let's go ahead and grab that, 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 and that. And that'll be a way to set this spell up to be even cheaper. So I'm trying to make this spell as cheap as possible, right? So down here, we go to our rings here. Go ahead and grab our... Uh, fire protection, which I don't even think we need with this armor. So let's go ahead and pop that in there. So that'll be our discount one. Then this one here for the Enchanter's Mirror. Go ahead and do that. Two glass, two of the wood, and then two of the Manipulation Essence. 
And what we put in the center of that one, I forget. Need to put ourselves a, wait, uh, a source gem block. Let's go ahead and grab source here. Get that out of the way. Get ourselves, oh, we already have some of the gem blocks here. Go ahead and grab them. Go ahead and right click that in there. And that should handle that. Now to get the spell on there, we actually have to make another spell to put on there and cast it while it's on the scribes table. It's a little weird how it works there, but I'll show you how it works. But we go ahead and uh, grab ourselves this mirror here. This thing here gives you a discount when it's uh, basically enchanted with a spell, right? It makes the spells way cheaper for you. Uh, is it down there? No, it's down here, right? So let's go ahead and head down here. Go ahead and pop that there. Need to create a new spell here. So go to, I guess, uh, C. Go to here. Go ahead and uh, remove those. Now, when you create these spells here with this item, with the mirror, you actually just use the spell and you don't use a form. So you don't have to use self or anything like that. I just want it to be leap. So just go ahead and hit create there. I believe we just hold shift and right click on there. Or is it just right click? Maybe, no. Let's try that again. Oh, I already you can see there, it says in the bottom left there, set spell. So I think that's correct now. Does that actually tell us what's on there? It does. It says self leap, at which point we can actually use that spell. And you can see how little mana it's actually using. It's not too bad at all. Pretty cool, right? I actually need to turn off my jetpack for a second. So do that, this, turn that off. And you can see how easy we can actually kind of fly around and use virtually no mana at all whatsoever. This will be what I actually use in the other, and I guess the, uh, what other dimension there? Is the other and Twilight to actually move around. No problem at all whatsoever. So pretty cool in that regards. I think we produced our first singularity here. So let's go ahead and grab that puppy and go ahead and grab, I think over here I have a TNT. So a tiny TNT and an Pearl. So let's grab that. We need to explode this thing basically, so it's actually pretty easy to do. But anyway, it's a little weird. I'm gonna do a little higher too, so it doesn't actually blow up anything in my base. Yes, it'll still blow blocks up, I guess, when it's protected. So yeah, we want to have it a little higher. The tiny TNT one does a really small explosion anyway, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Do that, go ahead and grab a lever here. Do that, grab ourselves a lever. Fantastic. Go ahead and pop that down right there. Then we just go ahead and drop the ender pearl and this here, and just go ahead and uh, hit the lever there. That should explode to give us a quantum entangled singularity. So we'll actually have two of them, right? So that's kind of the idea. So maybe if we actually get to it, there you go. See they there, they're actually quantum entangled now. So that's what we need. To that, let's go ahead and get rid of you. The first one, I guess, we'll go down here into this ring here. Then we just need to go into the actual, I guess, the other dimension there and set up the second one. Then we're pretty much good to go. So that is ready there. Good uh, head over to the, uh, what's it called there? What's that called there? The hyper box, right? And all we have to do now is actually hook up the second ring, right? So let's actually go ahead and get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Let's actually pick up all those items too. Go ahead and do that. Those cables are really laggy and uh, we don't have to deal with them anymore. But anyway, I needed it at that point because, well, it was all we really had there. But now we have this. Shouldn't need it at all anymore. So let's go ahead and uh, hook this up here. So that's going to be our quantum ring, hopefully. Let's go ahead and uh, try that one more time. Can I have that back, please? There you go. Go ahead and uh, grab ourselves the ring. Pop right here. Make sure I don't click the center block there when I put this down too, otherwise we're leaving. There you go. There's our multi-block. Then we grab the quantum tangled singularity, pop that in there. That'll actually link that up. You see there it says device online. We may need uh, some power here. So let's actually grab a dense energy cell. Just to make sure this stays powered, I guess, uh, consistently, right? So that right there. So it has its own power over here. Then we'll grab ourselves a dense, uh, I guess, smart cable here. Go ahead and uh, figure out how we do this. This will be the center block here. Kind of come down. Do this right here. And this should be good. Then we want to import the items out of this. So we'll have a new way of importing out of here, right? So we'll have an import bus. So that should be pretty straightforward. So we'll just do that there. Go ahead and accelerate that. It takes a little time for this to ramp up. So it won't be able to pull the items at speed at first. But it should catch up here in a couple of seconds. Actually, it might catch up right away. No, it's not going to. Yeah, it's so weird, these cables, like the actual importers, they don't start at max speed. They kind of work their ways up. I don't know why they do that. There must be a reason behind it. But at some point, this is just going to start clearing this whole thing. <laughs> See there, it's actually going faster and faster. There you go. More and more and more. Isn't that so weird how it does that? That's so strange how it does that. And then it'll kind of clear it. And then it's going to be all cut up there, at which point uh, we won't have to worry about that anymore. Cool, huh? That's so nifty how that works there. So that part's done. We actually have our items kind of coming in automatically, which point all we we'll need is one more source jar. So this will be the kind of buffer. There you go. With that, we have a drive here. I'm just going to throw the drive in here too, because why not? There you go. Go ahead and pop that there. Go ahead and uh, throw in the uh, storage cell. And then I guess all we need now is another import bus. So let's go ahead and grab an import bus, pop that there, give this one speed. And then I guess all we need to go ahead and do is hook that up to a cable, which point uh, this should be working actually. Let's go here and go to source. Do we have it? 
10K? I guess that's 10K uh, millibuckets. I don't even know what it is. What is this? Is it, it's not, it's not a liquid. It's not, I'm not sure what it's called. It's just source, right? So whatever it is, it's a 10K of it. So that's cool. It's coming in. It's actually being, I guess, stored inside of A2. And that's the first time I've ever seen source actually, I guess, stored inside of A2, which is really rad. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And I guess in there, it's, uh, I guess, very low bytes too. So we'll have a ton of that based on not just 164K. That I should be able to hold massive amounts of source. So that's pretty neat. That's actually pretty rad. And this thing for now on will be a constant light show here as well, which means I'll be able to finally turn off my uh, particles again. The only reason I had them on was for this video anyway, so you can see what was going on. But in here, I'd have the particles down to minimal. Let's do that. Then everything will be kind of normal again. There you go. Much, much better. Yeah, the particles, I, I, I just the potion effects are the main thing that drive me crazy, I guess, for particle effects. I didn't find an easy way to kind of turn it off in this pack. Uh, usually it's in the options, right? So in the options and controls. No, it'd be options and video settings. Usually there's uh, one there just for potion effects, but I didn't find it anywhere. I don't know. It doesn't matter too much, but there you go. We have our, I guess, full automation for our source uh, being stored into A2, which is uh, really rad all around. So let's go see how fast this is at uh, filling this up as well. So we have that there. It's actually filling it up instantly. So you have to filter it to the source there. So I have it... Uh, set to warp generic stack which is what it's called there i grabbed that from the pen too the only way i could find the pin that i guess grab that too was here so i came inside and just hit a on that i was able to pin it over here so i was able to put in the filter there which is a little weird but it is uh, exporting it now it's filling up the source jar and it's speeding up these things non-stop right so they're going way faster than they were previously and it shows that we could actually move around the source no problem at all wherever we want to now without any issues so that's actually pretty rad how that works there quite happy with that quite happy have to have another setup, I guess, here, then another setup here. I noticed one thing, too. I edited the first part of the video, and I noticed one thing I said wrong. I thought these things worked without source. They actually have to have source to work, so we'll have to have source in this area as well. So that'll be something I'll have to do at some point. It doesn't really matter at this second because we're not going to be using them immediately, but I definitely need to have source in this area for these things to work because otherwise they don't work. So one thing I realized I never did was go ahead and actually operate our armor. I haven't done that yet, so I guess that's the thing. Let's go ahead and grab a few more of them. We've got a ton of those templates. Go ahead and grab those. Good, uh, pull off our armor here. And with that, we should be able to upgrade this all really easy. So we do that, 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 I guess, this. I think it's that too. And then I guess all our weapons and stuff as well. And just get everything upgraded because I just I just never got to it. So good to uh, grab this here. That. Good, grab our other pickaxe. And then I guess our axe as well. And with that, we should be able to, uh, I guess, uh, full on just upgrade it all. And so I guess we just go to use here and do that. Could uh, pull that in there. So I guess that'll be our chest plate. Uh, go ahead and, uh, ooh, that does not want to be shifted there. I don't know why that lagged, but anyway, could put our template. That's good there. Do our helmet. Oh, that helmet looks kind of goofy. Cut our boots down. There's our pickaxe. There's our sword. Uh, actually, I don't even use this sword. I don't even know why I upgraded it. There's ourselves our other pickaxe and then our other axe here. So this axe will be up to, I guess, 33 damage, which is not too bad. Our armor is up to, how much armor is that now? Nine armor on that. This one is 11 armor, so pretty good there. We should be pretty much near the point of unkillable. Actually, now that I think about it, that helmet is nowhere near as cool as the last one. Anyway, I now have these all hooked up to source as well. I just need to kind of do the last one here. Go ahead and do that. Set the filter. That is good there. Then all the setups now are hooked up to source, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So if we have to automate anything with these, we'll be able to do that. Same with this as well. So that'll be pretty cool. I think we'll have to have a way to automate this, right? Actually, I've never automated this before. So I don't know if there's anything special to it. But at some point, we'll have to do this automation for sure. So this is the one we need for the actual ATM star. So that'll be something that we definitely have to get to. Although I don't think we can automate the Wilden Tribute. Actually, we can probably do it with the uh, Drigby. So we'll probably have to get to the Drigby soon. Maybe in the next video. We'll probably end up heading to the other, I guess, in the next video as well. And uh, doing that stuff too. Because now we have good armor right so we have the best armor we can at this point we need to hunt down the last smithing template then on top of that i guess we need the pick glitches as well so i guess that's gonna be a thing as well so we'll go ahead and get that done but anyway that is cool that is awesome but i think we're going to go ahead and actually end this one here so as always if you guys like this video please hit that like button really liked it hit that subscribe button it is always appreciated when you guys all have a good one see you guys in the next video later